The INFJ personnel type is known for their deep capacity towards empathy towards others. INFJs are said to be capable of absorbing the emotions of other people. If you are an INFJ, you might find that others' emotions can get overwhelming. And so INFJs also have the capacity towards detaching and dissociating from their own emotions and emotions of others, turning into cold and stony shells. But what does this dissociation look like and what can INFJs do to remain connected and attached to their emotions in a way that is healthy and allows them to remain consistent in relationships and in their goals and in their passions? The INFJ is known to be introverted, intuitive, feeling and judging, leading with what we call the introverted intuition, INFJs seek towards the understanding of emotions and of life itself. INFJs are not just emotional, but also logical types which take on and reflect on emotions without wanting to become completely covered by them. This is similar to somebody that would, for example, just walk into the water, but avoid becoming the water. Instead, the INFJ seeks to understand and rationalize why do people feel the way that they feel. And so INFJs tend to take on and be receptive, highly receptive even to the emotions of other people. But INFJs seek towards trying to understand and explain emotions. Why do people have emotions? Rather than simply going into and identifying with the emotion, the INFJ wants to detach to understand it. And this allows the INFJ to walk and move between two worlds. In the process of dissociation, we can say that the INFJ has entered into a cognitive function loop in which they switch between intuition and thinking. And in this case, the INFJ will start towards detaching and avoiding emotions to a high extent. Now, what does dissociation look like and what can you recognize and how can you note this and spot when an INFJ is starting to become detached? Well, first of all, you might notice that INFJ puts on a stony demeanor outwards, where INFJs tend to normally be quite kind, uh, focused on trying to be positive and to be connecting and to be appreciative of other people. When INFJs detach, they can become kind of cold and distant towards others. And this can be a quite stark contrast. You can see the INFJ in a healthy state of mind being very smiling and very positive and very engaging. But then all of a sudden you notice that INFJ is completely shut off. They are not smiling anymore. They're not saying anything. Sure, they're not directly attacking you. They don't seem angry. They don't seem like they are upset with you. They just seem completely cut off. And you can start to wonder whether they have emotions in this state. Did the INFJ have emotions? Was the social and nice and positive qualities of the INFJ as the facade, did they make it up or was it real? And if you ask the INFJ, many INFJs won't even know the right answer to this question. They don't know in this state when they are dissociated how they really feel. The INFJ is hiding from all emotions and from all feelings and is entering into a purely rational state of mind. And in this state of mind, INFJs can ask themselves if they really like anyone or anything. Maybe they don't care about anything. Maybe everything is a lie. Maybe everything in life is an illusion. Maybe no attachments matter at all, right? And I was recently reading a book called The Sword of Kaigen, where one of the main characters revealed to have this kind of ability to really detach in his meditation to the point where he felt he became the mountain that he lived on. And in this state, he felt that he could completely distance himself from everything, from everyone and all emotions in their totality. When he became the mountain, everything felt insignificant. Nothing seemed to matter. No emotions, no actions, no activities seemed to have any point or purpose. This is, however, not a healthy state of mind for the INFJ. And while distance can allow you clarity and understanding, distance without attachment means having clarity about nothing. In this state of mind, when you're completely cut off from emotions, you don't know what it is that you're even supposed to analyze or what it is that you're supposed to understand in the first place because you don't even know if these things really exist. And so if you step too far into thinking, you'll find that you lose the point or the purpose of the rational process to begin with. Once again, intuition is the balance, the careful balance between feeling and thinking. An intuitive dominant type needs to manage and process both the subjective and the rational and the 
theoretical and the abstract. And so you have to have the capacity both to be able to feel your emotions and to recognize and see that what you're feeling. But you also need to have the capacity to be able to understand why you feel that way and what made you feel that way in the first place. If you miss one of those, you're going to find that you swing over into an unhealthy state of mind. And so, yes, it could be equally unhealthy for an INFJ to completely ignore their rational thoughts or their desire to understand or to explain and to purely experience things in a subjective way. Of course, there are what will often happen is INFJs move on a pendulum. INFJs can find themselves pressured to be overly social, overly positive, overly accommodating towards other people. In this state, INFJs will start to be hypersensitive to other people's emotions, trying to keep the peace, trying to keep the harmony, trying to make sure everyone is happy. When this happens, the INFJ steps too far into the water and the water starts to make it hard for them to breathe. At this point, there comes a time when INFJ feels it's too much. They're overwhelmed. They've taken on too much and they push themselves to their limit. They don't have any energy left. And so what INFJ feels, they must do the total opposite, completely distance themselves from other people, completely detach and completely dissociate. What's important to remember is to recognize this kind of a pendulum. Notice that if you swing too far into emotions as an INFJ, you're going to eventually feel an urge, the gravity of the pendulum, to want to swing back into a more logical and distanced way. But this can cause you to be very inconsistent towards other people. You'll find that you find yourself constantly switching from being super nice and super engaged with others to suddenly distancing yourself and being super disconnected from others. And this can make other people feel like they are temporary variables in your life. One day you matter and one day you don't. This can also make it hard to have consistent and long-term friendships and relationships. And so you want to make sure that you don't overswing in either direction. You want to recognize when you're stepping into too much accommodation, when you're becoming too, notch to, too nice to other people, when you're starting to give way too much. Recognize that every time you say yes to something, you're going to say no later. Every yes that you say today might become a no later. And so be more conservative about what you care about and how much you care about something and how much effort you put in something. Recognizing what's important what matters and what's less important and what doesn't matter as much. If you find yourself stuck in this kind of dissociative spiral and unable to get out, you have to consider first and foremost that this state is not real, right? The first thing you want to do in this kind of situation is to go out in nature and to take a step back and to sit down and to first present yourself using extroverted sensing. You want to connect to the ground, to the earth, to the bees, to the flowers, to the insects, to the birds, and everything happening around you. You want to spot and notice things like dogs coming up and people and hearing the shatter of others. You want to try to practice metta meditation, trying to practice love and gratitude for what it is that you see. Gratitude for the sun, gratitude for the clouds, gratitude for the sky, gratitude for the grass, gratitude for whatever it is that you happen to be experiencing at this time. Recognize that you are both intuition and practice. You are both theory and action. And so you're not one of these four dimensions of thinking. You're not your intuition. You're not your feeling. You're not your thinking. You're not your sensing. These things are just strategies that you use to connect with the world. And the world is equally a place that takes place in your imagination, in your intuition, and as well as in practice, in reality. And if you compromise one for the other, you miss out on both eventually. To have deep theories and ideas and insights, you have to immerse yourself and live a rich and active life. And that requires you to go out, to meet people, to connect with others, to do things. But in order to have deep imagination, you also need to protect your boundaries and to ensure that you every day have the chance to step back, to think and to process what it is that you experience. If you live life at too fast of a pace, you're going to find yourself becoming overwhelmed. If you live your life at no pace at all, just detached from everything, without connecting to anything, you'll find that gradually things stop having a point or a purpose. But all you have to do to connect with that point and purpose again is to sit and allow whatever it is that you feel and whatever it is that's going on to happen. Most of the times INFJs detach because they judge certain emotions as bad. They don't want to feel their anger. They don't want to feel shame. 
They don't want to feel sadness. They don't want to feel pain. If you have told yourself that some kind of emotion is a bad emotion, that some kind of emotion is something you can't deal with, or that it's too negative or too toxic or too wrong, well, you're going to find that that emotion continues to be there in the shadow. And you're going to find that whenever that emotion comes up, you'll feel that urge to distance yourself, to detach and disconnect. And so you have to recognize that all emotions have value and have purpose and all emotions are information. Try to connect and understand why you feel the way that you feel. And that is how you can step into your INFJ empathy superpower. Thank you so much for watching. See you all in the next video.